like chibok like Kuriga. next month will be 10 years on the 14th of april 2014 276 school girls were taken away from their school yeah nigerians came out some nigerians came out to make demands others attacked them and said why should they the politics of the day was what mattered to a lot of people. Not the fact that young girls have been taken away and children have been taken away. Today, we see more and more and more abductions going on. And just a few days ago, a recent one, almost everything the same as Chibok. I repeat, like Chibok, like Kuriga. Take a listen to this. We are currently standing in front of the school, uh, government school Kuriga. This school two days ago, um, it was a site of uh, almost a war zone. Gunmen disguised as military arrived and they abducted around uh, 300 or more children. Hundreds of them managed to escape, but uh, quite a number of them are still in captivity. All the mothers you see have children that have been taken. One of the mothers, four or eight children, were taken aged from four years old to 16. She's alone in the house after all the eight children have been taken. And we can see pain. We are asking that uh, the rescue should be done as soon as possible. And we want to support the parents so that they can cope with this kind of tragedy. We hope that we'll be able to do this as soon as possible because the time is running out. Hmm. Yeah. If you are a parent, you have your children with you. Some parents are out there. Their children are not with them. Their children have been taken away by terrorists. There are even parents that their children have been taken away for over 10 years. You know what it is? We all love our children. For those who came out when that abduction happened in 2014, it was simply because they could relate. It was either they had children or they had someone or they felt if it was they that were taken. And they came out and made demands. But instead of us as a nation to come together and rally around to ensure that we prevent sub subsequent of these things happening, tell the terrorists with a very strong message that if you touch one Nigeria, all of us will come after you. We fail to do that. And today, abduction has more or less become our reality. You see what you just said? Everything mirrors what happened in Chibok. One in them coming with, the, the terrorists coming with uh, wearing soldiers' uniform and telling the students that, oh, they're there to save them and all of that. That was one of the ways they were able to take so many numbers. So many people kept saying, how, how can they carry hundreds of students? How can they? Yes, because they came and told them that they were soldiers. They were there to protect them from Boko Haram in the case of uh, Chibok. And so they all got them to gather in one place. It was when the terrorists started burning the school that the students realized that, oh, these were actually the terrorists. And not, and not, um, uh, and not soldiers as they had earlier uh, taught or been told by the people who came. The same thing they did in Dabchi. When they went to Dabchi, they were also wearing uh, military wear, and they said they were soldiers. But some of the students, luckily, said when they were interviewed later, and they said they remember that that was exactly what they did with Chibo, and so they escaped. This one too, hundreds of them. We see some that have escaped. They came in military where they went to school, they packed children. And you know what is most striking? It's just looking at that video. If you will, go back to that video and watch it again. You say the common thing. They're children of the poor. Sadly, in Nigeria, when you're poor, you're faceless, nameless, and voiceless. You're not seen as a human being. Your life doesn't matter. People don't even want others to talk about your life. The government doesn't even care about you, doesn't want to talk about uh, for your life to be spoken about you are left on your own these are parents who are looking for food to even eat look at the people who are making the minds they have been made nameless voiceless faceless they are standing they are speaking just because they are poor it's not a crime to be poor it's not 
When election comes, they know all the, they need the thumbprint of the poor, right? They, 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 they go after it. But that's all the value of a Nigerian person who is poor. That's all that matters, that thumbprint. And after election, you're discarded like some piece of wood. Discarded like a rag that nobody wants to see. Nobody wants to attach governance to it. The reason why people stood, why people spoke during Chibo was because the parents don't even have a voice. And yet many people insulted and said, we were crying more than the bereaved. Maybe you do it better than we did. Maybe we did it wrong. I'm waiting. When this abduction happened, I said to people, well, I'm waiting, particularly myself, I'm waiting to learn how to do it better. But mostly what I see is silence. Is silent what is silence is what is better? That people will be abducted and citizens will be silent and we move on. And we move on and just keep letting these things happen. How are someone, someone's children, almost all your children, all your children packed away by terrorists, and that's okay? If they are done with the children in those places. You think they won't come after our own children, your children, my children, everyone's children? We're already seeing what is happening in Abuja. People are having to move away from houses they've built inside Abuja. Because what? Kidnapping is on the rise. People are being kidnapped right inside their houses. That's what happens when you do nothing. When people were keep being killed in those villages, in those hinterlands, they call them fridges. They call them ungoverned spaces. And I kept saying, when they are done with those spaces, guess what? They are going to come to our spaces. They are here already. And we are going to keep continuing with the silence. We are doing nothing. When we keep silent and we do nothing, it's only a matter of time before it comes to us. And when it comes to us, who is going to speak? Because we have been silent. And all of those that would have collectively spoken, one after the other, they've gotten at us and taken us out. And that would be it. Is silence the option that you want? Some people are shouting, where are those who stood for bring back? Yes, when they were doing bring back our grace, you attacked them. For 10 years, people put their lives on the line. You don't know what it is to take over that pain. Maybe you do it better than we did. And I pray you do better. And I'm ready to learn. But let's remember something. Silence can never, I will never be an option.